So you've purchased a DSLR camera, you finally have the opportunity to take the time and do a nice time-lapse photography sequence. You set it to manual mode, you make sure the white balance is set to manual, make sure the eyepiece is covered, all of those things. Well, you go to bring in your shots and string them together in your editing software, and you can't help but notice there's this annoying flickering that completely ruins your time-lapse. Well, this is exactly what happened to me recently, but it wasn't my first time lapse, so to say I was a little bit confused would be an understatement. It was pretty disappointing since it was the total lunar eclipse, and it's pretty rare, so it wasn't like I could just go out and try again another night. After I had uploaded my finished video to YouTube, I was looking through the comments that were left on my time lapse video. And there was a comment left by a user, Learn Time Lapse, that mentioned mechanical inconsistencies as a possible source of time lapse flicker. Well, this is something I had never heard of before, so I went to his page to investigate, and his featured video was specifically about aperture inconsistencies. And the problem lies in the fact that if you have your lens set to anything other than wide open, when your camera shoots a picture, it cranks your aperture wide open for a split second or millisecond and closes back to what you had it set at. Now, every time it does this and opens and closes, it creates a slight deviation in the exact size of your aperture opening. And this slight deviation causes a very slight change in your exposure. So in between shots, if there's any slight change in exposure, it's going to cause that appearance of flickering in your time lapse. So I decided to test this theory by shooting a time lapse and doing a side by side comparison, one with the aperture set wide open and another with it set partially closed. And the results were pretty irrefutable. clearly a substantial problem with lenses that are set for automatic metering and have a chip inside of them. My previous time lapses were at night and I had my aperture set wide open, which is clearly why I didn't encounter the problem before. I was also using my only lens that has a manual aperture ring on it, it's fully manual, so I didn't encounter the problem on that one either. Well, there was a solution mentioned in his video that required tricking the camera into thinking you had a manual lens on. Well, I tried this and it involves unlocking your lens and slightly disengaging it so it disengages the contacts from the camera body and the lens. Well, this seemed to work, but leaving the camera at the same settings produced a really underexposed photo. I had to increase my, or decrease my shutter speed and increase my ISO quite significantly just to get the same exposure with the lens properly attached. It's an option, but I wasn't too satisfied with it. Well, you can't shoot time lapses with the aperture set wide open all the time. It's just not an ideal scenario, especially if you want to incorporate objects into the foreground to create a nice perspective or you have a fast lens. There are a few things you can do to help you in these circumstances, assuming you don't have a manual lens. 
You can use a neutral density filter so you can significantly slow down your shutter speed depending on what kind of neutral density filters you have or if you stack them or use a gradient one, whichever. Or you can use a circular polarizing filter which is what I utilized. I would highly suggest using a CPL regardless when you're outside because it gives a really nice color balance between the sky and the landscape. Some other things you want to be aware of are automatic lighting settings. And in my Nikon, this is called active delighting or automatic delighting. If you do not have this function turned off, it's going to cause the uh, annoying flickering by changing the lighting and coloring of your picture slightly. Now another helpful mode in the camera, which I don't know if it's in any others besides my Nikon, is the exposure delay mode. And it slightly delays the shutter so the movement of the mirror doesn't cause vibration in your shot, which can also ruin your time lapse. So some other things to consider to prevent the flickering in your time lapse is setting the camera to manual mode. Make sure that you have the camera set to manual white balance. Uh, make sure you're set on manual focus. Make sure there's no light getting in through your optical viewfinder. Make sure you turn on exposure delay mode if your camera has it. And turn off the active lighting on your camera too. Once you've utilized all of these methods, you should come out with a beautiful time lapse that you can be completely satisfied with and most importantly, be flicker free. I hope this video completely shed you of the frustration of flickering your time lamps and being ruined, and it can inspire you to think of new, more creative ways to shoot. Thanks for watching, and more importantly, have fun.